Hi, this is Mike Trevor, and welcome again to these lectures online. Um, today we're going to cover monetary policy, obviously. Um, monetary policy goes along with the question of how do you solve an unhealthy economy. So that's what we're going to answer today. Um, again, please take some basic notes, and I will answer questions in class next time we meet. Um, monetary policy is controlled by something called the Federal Reserve. So let me briefly go over that. The Federal Reserve is often known as the Fed. Um, not the feds, that's somebody else. The Fed is the Federal Reserve. And as you can see, it is a organization, a governmental organization that has been around for quite a long time. Its basic purpose is to serve as a nation's bank. And what that means is, as you can see, if they divide the nation into these 12 different regions. And in each region, there is a regional bank controlled by the Fed. Um, and this helps to regulate the economy. Um, basically, what it does is the Federal Reserve um, is a bank for bankers. Um, you and I will not directly deal with the Fed, but the federal, the Fed's actions can affect us um, on a daily basis. So, originally the Fed was created to regulate the banking industry. Um, before this, banks were basically known as wildcat banks, making up a lot of rules um, that benefited their rich owners and not so much the average person who was trying to use the bank for savings or taking out loans. And so the federal government decided during the early 20th century, during the era of progressivism, to sort of um, create this agency to have more oversight of banks in general. And today, any bank in the United States must follow the rules and regulations set down by the Fed. Um, an important point to make is that the Fed has lots of independence. Um, that's because um, it wants to do what's in the best interest of the economy, as it says, not necessarily what politicians want. Sometimes politicians' agenda is much more short-sighted than what the economy needs. And so um, oftentimes the Fed is, is known as a quasi-federal agency because of the massive amount of freedom it has over what it does. Today, the Fed is ran by this woman. Her name is Janet Yellen. She's the first woman to lead the Federal Reserve, um, and she has an immense amount of influence, um, not only in the U.S. economy, but also internationally, based on how she, what the decisions she makes as chairperson. Um, lots of businessmen, obviously bankers, follow her opinions and what she says in public very, very closely. Um, but again, her basic goal is like the goal of the federal government, is to maintain a healthy economy. Her goal is to address the issues of low economic growth, high unemployment, or rising prices. And so that is what she will do at all times. Um, but again, she has a lot of influence and power. Some people say that she has the second most powerful position in the world after the President of the United States. So what does it do? Um, in the most simple terms, what the Federal Reserve does, it basically will either add money to the economy or take money out of the economy. So simply put, it controls the money supply. Um, you think of it as a tap, like your faucet. It can open the faucet up and have more water, or can, in this case, money flowing into the economy, or it can shut the tap down and have just a little bit dribble in. Um, but by changing the amount of money in the economy, as it says, it will influence the interest rates that banks offer. So think about it. Interest rates for your student loans, for your car loan, for your home loan, for credit cards, all of those different interest rates are indirectly influenced by the Fed policies. And there is where it gets the majority of its power from. Now, in terms of the tools the Federal Reserve uses, there are three major tools that the Federal Reserve uses. We will talk about them in order of importance. This is the least important one. Um, the first one is known as the Federal Re the Reserve Requirement. And that is simply put, just the amount of money the banks must keep in their vaults at all time. Um, obviously, the bank has to keep some money in their vaults because you and I need to be able to withdraw it when we need it. Um, so other than that issue, um, the bank would love to loan out as much money as possible because the more money it loans out, the more money it makes in terms of profits from the interest rates that it charges. Um, but back in the 1930s, in the beginning of the Great Depression, um, people went to the bank to get their money out and it turned out the bank had loaned it all out and then lost it in the financial crash or poor investments by individuals. And so to avoid that, the Federal Reserve requires banks to have a minimum amount of money in their um, vaults at all time. And as a side note, that's why when banks, when bank robbers show up, there's actually something to rob. The second tool is known as a discount rate. Um, think of this as uh, the rate that banks pay when they borrow money from the Fed. Sometimes um, banks need 
a, a bit of extra money um, to balance their books. They're required by law to make sure that their assets and their liabilities balance out every day. If for some reason they don't, the Fed can, the, excuse me, the banks can go to the Federal Reserve and borrow money for a short term. Um, banks do not like to do this. Um, again, like it says, it's kind of like when you ask your parents for money. That might be something that you're okay with now, but in 10, 20 years, that's probably something you're not going to want to do. Um, so this is an, an option for banks, but not one that they like to use very much. But again, obviously, just like you and me, if the Fed raises the interest rate, that will have an effect on how many loans the bank takes, and or as it lowers it here, that will also influence how many loans the bank takes from the Fed. So just like you and I are motivated by the cost of money, so are banks. Finally, the most important and significant um, tool the Fed uses is called the federal funds rate. Um, this is basically um, the interest rate that banks charge each other when they borrow money. Okay, this is the the rate that the bank that the Fed, excuse me, tries to adjust or manipulate through its actions most often. Um, and what you can see here is you can see here is the interest rate of the federal fund rate throughout the last almost 50 plus years, and you can see it's it's been there's been quite a dramatic change, um, going from quite high to now where it's almost at zero percent which basically means banks can borrow money for, for nothing, for free. Um, and that is a result of the financial crash of 2008. So the question is, how does the Fed really change interest rates? Okay. Okay, so sorry. So how does the Fed actually change the interest rate? Um, well, you can either obviously raise or lower the reserve requirement. Um, if it raises the reserve requirement, banks will have less money to loan out. If it lowers the reserve requirement, banks will have more money to loan out. Uh, same with the discount rate. Obviously, raising the discount rate will make interest rates or the fee on money go up, and banks will take less loans. If the discount rate goes down, then all of a sudden there'll be lower costs of money, and banks will take out more loans. Okay, those are the two basic ones. But again, it doesn't really adjust reserve requirement or discount rate too often. What it does most often is it tries to adjust the federal funds rate. And how does it do that? It does it through the buying and selling of these items. These are called federal bonds, savings bonds sometimes. So it can either buy or sell these federal bonds to banks. Okay, so let's go through and explain to me how it was going to work. Okay, so basically what the Federal Reserve does, it will either buy bonds or sell bonds. And through that, it will either add money to the economy or take money out of the economy. And that will affect the interest rates that banks offer you and me. And let me go through and see and show you how that would work. So let's assume that we have a problem in the economy. Obviously, we have low economic growth or low GDP and high unemployment. Remember, we have those two problems. They go hand in hand. So what would happen? Well, the Federal Reserve would begin a policy that's called easy monetary policy. And that simply implies that they're going to try to add money to the economy. Um, and they will add money to the economy um, in order to get the interest rates to come down. Okay. If that happens, if money, if the money supply is increased and thereby interest rates come down, what that means is that it will be less expensive as it says to borrow money. Money will be cheaper. What that means is individuals, you and me, and companies think of Apple, Google, um, or even your you know your small mom and pop stores. They can go out and borrow more money. Okay. If people borrow more money, then they will obviously consume more. They'll use that money. They'll spend it on, you know, buying items, personal items, whether it be cars or homes or taking vacations. Or businesses will obviously use that money to buy new technology, maybe put down payment on a new factory or something like that. But all of that will lead to higher GDP. Okay, and of course, as businesses invest more, they're going to need to hire more people, which will mean unemployment goes down. As people buy more goods and services, those companies need to increase production. And in the short term, of course, we all know that that means they need to hire more people. So this will cause businesses, as it says here, to produce more by hiring more people. Therefore, unemployment goes down. Okay. So anytime infl in the interest rates go down, again, thanks to the Fed, who has been um, selling, sorry, buying bonds from banks, will mean that people can get, the interest rate will come down, which means people can refinance their homes, meaning they can get their mortgages payments to go lower. Uh, means people can buy cars for less. Um, and again, things that are just in general less expensive. Okay, and again, this increases the demand for those goods because as prices go down, we know people buy more and more and more. Um, 
and as people buy more, you hire more workers. So it will solve the problem of low economic growth and high unemployment. Okay. Um, and again, as we said, businesses increase their investments. Okay. They will also hire more workers. Okay. So how does easy, easy monetary policy work? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, if you're going to lower interest rates, you lower discount rate. That means banks can borrow more money cheaper. Okay, which is great. Um, and then banks will lower their interest rates to get customers to come to take out those loans. Okay. In terms of federal fund rate, okay. So how does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. What the federal, if it wants to, if it wants to decrease the federal fund rate, which is the basic rate that all interest rates are based on, what the Fed does is it will try to buy bonds from banks. Banks hold bonds um, as a form of investment. Um, because remember, these are the bonds the federal government um, offers for sale, uh, in part to um, let us spend more money than we make. Um, people buy these bonds because we know the government will always pay back its debts. So banks buy these bonds as an investment. So the Fed goes to these banks and says, hey, we want to buy these bonds from you. We'll give you a really good deal price um, for these bonds. And obviously, most banks want, want a good deal, and they don't want to upset the Fed. And so they, buy, they, let, they sell their bonds to the Fed. So the Fed buys these bonds for the bank. The, the bank now has more cash and less bonds. Well, what does the bank want to do with this extra money? It's very simple. It will take that money and try to issue loans for it. Now, as you imagine, the Fed does this to banks across the nation. And so th in this way, it gives the banks, in general, a whole lot more money. Well, how does the bank encourage people to come take out more loans from its bank? They must, as it says here, lower the interest rates or the fees. That's basically lowering the price of loans. Obviously, you and I and businesses will be enticed by this, will be excited by lower prices for money, and we will go out and take out more loans. Okay. Therefore, of course, the more loans are made, and then as we just described, um, the whole process of economic growth will occur and unemployment will go down. Okay. On the other side, if you want to raise interest rates, you want to do a policy that's called tight monetary policy. This is most often done when you are trying to deal with inflation. And it's basically everything in reverse. So the discount rate will be raised. And as you can see, the banks will have to pay more for loans from the Fed. They're going to take out less loans. They still need to cover their costs of paying their employees, of the space, utilities, etc. And so every loan they make has to make them more money. Well, how does it make money? It's based on the interest rate. So therefore, banks will have to raise their interest rates. Again, same thing will happen with the federal trying to raise the federal funds rate. This time, the Fed will sell bonds to banks. They'll tell them again, hey, we have a really good deal for you. We'll give you these bonds at a great price. The, the banks will be enticed by this. They will, they, will, they will take the bonds that the Fed is selling. The Fed now has, has removed money from banks. Banks have more bonds, but they can't loan out bonds. So what do they do in order to try to make sure they're covering their costs and still making profit? They have to increase the price of loans. So interest rates go up, okay? And of course, as interest rates go up, okay, um, that will reduce inflation because people aren't borrowing as much, they're not spending as much, and businesses will be motivated to lower their price, okay? So we'll go over that, and specifically what it says is, okay, there'll be less money in the economy when you have tight monetary policy. Um, the demand for, from consumers uh, will go down and therefore inflation will go down. Okay, Because there's less money in the economy, interest rates have gone up, which basically means it's more expensive to borrow money. Okay, In general, that will lead, as it says here, to less consumption, less business investment. Okay, It will cause unemployment to rise a little bit, but that's okay because usually, again, this happens near the top of the business cycle, so unemployment is not a problem, nor is GDP. So um, I know this is pretty quick and we went over some stuff. Um, um, a little short, so please uh, bring questions to class, um, and I will be happy to go. Have a good day.